Hello everybody, John here, and uh, today we're going to uh, talk about an update about uh, DaVinci Resolve 17 and what's going on with that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about my experience uh, watching HDR uh, video on uh, smartphones and why uh, HDR movies on Netflix are so dark. Anyway, uh, those are uh, the three topics. I'm going to try and stick uh, with those three uh, for this video. Uh, hopefully it won't stretch out longer than eight minutes. I'll, I'll go as quickly as I can. Um, first, uh, for the update, it's going to be another week or two, apparently, before the shops here get the uh, Resolve uh, speed editor for editing uh, quickly on uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, as you probably already know, if you've been following my channel or if you've been uh, reading my blog, you know that I'm really excited about using uh, DaVinci Resolve since they added the HDR uh, grading tools. Um, I don't really think uh, Final Cut Pro is a great platform for editing HDR video. Um, so hopefully in the next week or two, we'll see uh, the if, when the shops here get the uh, Resolve uh, speed editor, I can pick that up and get uh, the free um, DaVinci Resolve 17 uh, Studio or uh, the reverse, pick up the Resolve Studio and get the speed editor for free. I'm not really sure how that works. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, it for the update. All right, uh, from time to time during this video, I'm going to probably flash you with a blinding light. Um, to see if that prevents the ABL or the auto dimming on my LG OLED television um, from kicking in and making the picture black. So why don't we try that right now? Ooh, blinding light. Um, I really don't know. Uh, um, I'm. Ooh, blinding light. Okay, I hope you can still see okay. Um, what's going on with that is uh, for these longer, long form uh, videos of mine where I'm just sitting and talking, I'm finding that after a minute or so that the LG screen starts to get dimmer and dimmer. And after a couple of minutes, you can't even see the picture anymore. It's so dark. Um, so uh, in the meanwhile, I still have to order an LG service remote uh, from the United States. Um, they're pretty cheap, I guess. And if you have an Android uh, device, you can download an app. I'm told that you can use as an LG service remote. Go into the service menu on the LG television and uh, turn off the uh, dimming, uh, which uh, if you're doing editing on an LG OLED television is probably highly recommended. Okay, I'm going to blind you again, maybe. Ooh. All right. I have no idea whether that's going to have any effect on the auto dimming whatsoever. Okay, so uh, we covered the update on uh, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, how I'm going to assault you with a bright light uh, from time to time. Okay, uh, my experience watching uh, HDR on uh, tablet and uh, smartphone. Uh, my experience was watching uh, some of my videos and those of some others uh, from YouTube on an iPhone XS, uh, the Galaxy S20, uh, and I'm sorry, the Galaxy S20 Plus and the Galaxy Tab S7. And what I found was viewing in ordinary light or in the shop where the lights are very bright and they have large windows that look out uh, side, that um, the, uh, the experience was extremely poor. And I'm guessing most people who use uh, smartphones and watch videos are doing so in their offices or their homes and are not watching uh, at night in a pitch dark room. Um, so that's very concerning to me. But before we go on, let me flash another bright light at you. Ooh. Let me open this up so I can make it even worse. 
Maybe we could check the flare characteristics of my uh, Sony 20 millimeter. Ooh, I can do some outside of the screen and see uh, how it handles handles the flare here. It looks like it's pretty bad. I don't think that's going to have any effect, but we'll see. I put my toy away. Okay, so getting back to the cell phones, um, the Galaxy S20 Plus is rated really highly for color accuracy. The iPhone, uh, the iPhones are supposed to be pretty good as well, but um, viewing HDR in broad daylight or in an office is just a terrible idea. Um, according to DisplayMate, um, they say all existing displays are only accurate when viewed in absolute darkness, zero lux. Um, the most important improvements in OLED and uh, LCD mobile displays will come from improving their image and picture quality and screen readability in real world ambient light, which washes out the screen images resulting in reduced image contrast, reduced color saturation and reduced color accuracy. Um, the key will be in lowering screen reflectance and implementing dynamic color management, and they go on and on. So um, most people are not going through all those steps. Um, so they're watching, uh, if they're watching HDR at all on, an, on a smartphone, the, the, um, the experience can't be very good. Um, but they do say that uh, phones like the um, S20 Plus, the, the Samsung, um, have virtually uh, indistinct, their, that their color accuracy is indistinguishable from perfect. Um, and um, they say, I think they say the same thing for the iPhone. Uh, lots of good things to say about um, OLED technology. Okay, uh, I'm going to hit you with the bright light here. I may just cut out those sections with the bright light and uh, just replace it with a white screen or something to keep the uh, OLED television from shutting off. Okay, so we covered the update for the Resolve uh, 17, uh, the experience of what, trying to watch HDR videos on uh, a smartphone, which is a horrible idea um, because most people are not watching them in pitch darkness, pitch black, like is recommended. Um, and now we're going to go on to the subject of why are HDR movies so darn dark? Um, I, w I read online some remarks uh, on some uh, different forums and Reddit and so on that um, some people were complaining about uh, movies on Netflix like Altered Carbon uh, that they said that the experience was uh, like what? Like listening to a radio show because um, they could only hear the sound, they couldn't see any picture. And I thought they were exaggerating, so I watched a few episodes of Altered Carbon on my LG OLED uh, in my room with the, uh, most of the lights out. I, I turn on one very small light because I think you want to have a little bit of bias lighting in the room. Um, and uh, I couldn't see into the shadows either. A lot of the movie was just way too dark, and uh, so just we're going to take a few seconds and ask why, uh, try to answer the question, uh, why are the Netflix movies so darn dark? And I'm just talking about Netflix because that's all I have, but uh, other people are experiencing the same thing on, uh, I guess, Amazon or what other services have HDR content. I'm not really familiar with it. Um, for one is, uh, what is it? I think. One reason I've heard is uh, suggested is uh, for backward compatibility. Whenever they make an HDR grade for, uh, say, Netflix uh, for distribution, they usually also make an SDR grade uh, for non-HDR uh, viewers, like on an SDR screen. And so uh, I would guess that if the image is uh, not so bright that it would be easier to try to match the uh, SDR picture to the 
HDR image or something like that, but um, I don't really know if that's so because, the, first of all, the movies are extremely dark, uh, way darker than they need to be, and those bright areas are just small areas like, um, like the light I'm about to shine on you, like this one. Uh, they don't occupy a very large portion of the screen. They're usually natural lights uh, behind, often behind the actors, behind the talent, uh, in the distance. Um, so anyway, that's, that's one possibility is uh, backward compatibility. Also, uh, another reason uh, could be uh, because the director or producer thinks that um, the darker image uh, looks more cinematic or film-like or something like that. Um, but again, uh, I never had to struggle to see into the shadows in a movie theater, even though the, uh, typically the brightness is much lower than a home uh, viewing experience. It's about, um, in a theater, it's about 50 nits or something like that. Um, so I don't know, but they think it's more cinematic possibly. Um, the best answer I could come up with for that is that um, uh, that um, first of all, most uh, televisions, uh, uh, most consumer TVs, uh, people are watching HDR on, uh, they max out at maybe around a thousand nits or so, and most programs are graded uh, to max out at about 1,000 nits. Uh, some TVs can go brighter than that now, but 1,000 nits is uh, what most of the programs are graded at. I guess some are graded at 4,000 nits or something like that, but not many people have televisions that get that bright. Um, so um, if uh, your overall brightness of the image, uh, say it's a dystopian science fiction movie like uh, Altered Carbon, uh, where things are all happening in the shadows, it's very dark and creepy, but um, occasionally you'll have flashes of light or uh, uh, light fixtures in a building or on the street or something like that, those uh, br bits of bright light will uh, be far more impactful or, or impressive or effective if they're uh, on a very dark background, whereas if the overall brightness of the picture was much brighter, like um, several hundred nits, like 400 nits or brighter, um, those 1,000 nit uh, maximum uh, intensities uh, would be uh, far less impressive and that's how I feel about it. But there's still no reason for shows like Altered Carbon to be so dark as they are. Anyway, uh, we're going to uh, cut it here because I have a tendency to go on forever. Um, I, if you found this video interesting, uh, please hit the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.